Hi, I'm Bill Berry, NASA's Chief Historian. Every day on the International Space Station, NASA and our partner nations collaborate above the Earth at humanity's toehold in space. As the space station orbits above us every 90 minutes, 16 times a day, its multinational crew performs important scientific research off the Earth for the Earth. The science conducted on our orbiting laboratory advances global scientific knowledge about our home planet, as well as space, physical, and biological sciences. Today, American astronaut Scott Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko are in the midst of a one-year mission aboard the space station that's providing important insights into the effect of microgravity on human physiology. This information will be critical for preparing humanity for longer duration missions on NASA's journey to Mars. This amazing research laboratory continues the global cooperation that has always been at the core of NASA's mission. But 40 years ago, a big breakthrough came when two Cold War adversaries, the United States and the Soviet Union, joined hands in exploration. Let's take a look back at this first time these two great space powers flew together. The seeds of cooperation planted then continue to flourish today. We were in a position to open a crack in the door between East and West during the Cold War. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty, sounds good. Apollo Vino, Mila, Alexei. July 1975, an American Apollo spacecraft and a Soviet Soyuz spacecraft prepare to join in Earth orbit, 140 miles above the Atlantic near Portugal. During their two-day joint flight, astronauts and cosmonauts transferred between spacecraft. They conducted space experiments, and they tested a compatible rendezvous and docking system evaluating its potential as the universal standard on future spacecraft for docking and rescue. The mission climaxed more than three years of planning and preparation, a time during which differences in language, in technology, in political creed were set aside in favor of the common goal. This was the mission that opened the door to international manned spaceflight, the mission that set the course for joint flights of the future. This was the mission of Apollo Soyuz. We should get together the two superpowers in space, but it was kind of unique and, uh, that here each country had at least 10,000 nuclear weapons aimed at each other. But yet, we would have a joint cooperation in space. This was the peak of the Cold War. Both sides believed that the other side is the evil enemy. The mission was unique and uh, it was supported because I think the populations on each side had a desire for the Cold War to be over. But at that time, the relations were not very good between our countries, but that project made us work together. It was quite a, a a symbolic effort to open the relationship between the two countries. Well, we'd trained together for two years. In fact, it was our side that insisted we have to start two years in advance. And the Soviets then said, no, of course, everything was, they say, Bolshoi secret. Everything was a big secret. Stafford has the Oklahoman pronunciation. He's very hard to understand, and I think that even his own wife did not understand him very well sometimes. We had a lot of fun because everybody made mistakes in the other language, and in some cases it's like learning a, a listening to a three-year-old trying to get better in English. <laughs> Uh, so we made mistakes and everybody got a lot of laughs out of that. We 
learned to understand each other and we spoke the language that we named Rustin, that is Russian in Houston. And so eventually we were able to overcome the language barrier. Dick Slate was a wonderful person. He was one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts and due to a medical problem uh, uh, was taken off a flight where he was supposed to fly the second orbital mission in the United States. And uh, then he was head of the astronaut group. He was my boss for many years and he ended up, I was commander and he was on the crew with me. And he was a wonderful person and did a great job and it was, he finally got a chance to fly in space. But it was really wonderful after we'd trained in the mock-ups, the simulators back and forth for two years, to finally, you know, they launched from Kazakhstan. Back in the world, and seven and a half hours later, when the orbit came across the Cape, we launched two days of phasing and catch-up maneuvers, and I went in to the final rendezvous and docking. Okay, copy. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the uh, TPI maneuver was indeed successful. Tom Stafford reported from Apollo that he was station keeping with Soyuz. Both control centers, Moscow and Houston, have given a go for docking. Soyuz, Apollo, I need you five by five. Uh, that's what made it easy for us to communicate with our U.S. counterparts because we were professional speaking the same professional language, and this helped us build a trust as well. Oh, please don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three meters. Three meters. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. Capture. Okay, go to unlock. I knocked on the hatch. I heard him knock back, and I said in Russian, "Kato Budata," like who's there? Like you know, 140 miles up. Who else could be there? On a show. How far away you look free? Ah! Ah! Yes, sir. Got it. It was really the handshake uh, which symbolized uh, potential lessening of tension in the Cold War and, and friendship. May our joint work in space serve for the benefit of all countries and peoples on the Earth. Alexei is a great artist, and during those two days, uh, he sketched in a black and white sketch two pictures of me, and he gave them to me. I have them very proudly framed in my house, and they'll be going into a museum. Before flight, I prepared stickers, labels for Stoli vodka, Moscow vodka, etc. I took containers with coffee, with borscht, and uh, applied those labels on those containers. And so when we sat down to eat in the vehicle, according to the Russian tradition, we must celebrate our first meeting. So they were very uncomfortable, but they went ahead and opened the containers and said, let's have a drink to our first meeting. And once they started drinking, they realized that this was borscht. That's what was in the containers, and everybody was disappointed, actually. 
After two days, you know, we docked and spent two days together, undocked, redocked again in the test, then finally undocked and we slowly started drifting off our own way. We're about 30, 40 miles apart. We start receiving the signal from Apollo and I listening to music and I hear some women laughing and I can hear some glasses clinking. I press the transmission button and ask Vance, what's going on? And they're saying, oh, we're having a party over here. We're done working and so we're partying. Turns out that they recorded all this noise, all these sounds while still on Earth, and then they played it back to pretend that they had a party. <laughs> the friendship has lasted very dearly all these years. I consider General Alexei Leonov like a, a brother to me, practically. <laughs> and what we do today on the International Space Station and uh, the type of working groups we have and how we approach things is all based on what we worked out. So Apollo saw you starting from scratch. Tell Professor Bushuyev it was a soft docking. Well done, Tom. It was a good show. They are looking forward now. So I'm, I'm rather proud of what the, the whole team accomplished. So that kind of opened the gate to go forward for international cooperation and exploration. It's an endeavor. We have capture of Zarya. Don't think it's all over. It's uh, just starting. It was a first 40 years ago, and this tradition would be continued on the Space Shuttle, on Mir, and today on the International Space Station. The successful Apollo-Soyuz test project demonstrated how much was possible through international partnerships. As we move from the International Space Station and low Earth orbit outward to the vicinity of the Moon and visit asteroids, we'll continue to learn the skills and technology that will enable our journey to Mars. There's one lesson we already know, and we learned just how powerful it can be in 1975. That lesson is the value of international cooperation on the road to space. <laughs>